Hello and happy spring, friends. So it is gorgeous here in New Jersey. Gosh, we've just had some really wonderful weather. Pretty warm winter, pretty mild for the most part. I mean, we did have some cold weeks, but really mild for our area. And everything is really coming in bloom. And I thought I would take you guys around since it's really been a while since we've been walking around the grounds. And I just really kind of wanted to show you what's blooming here in my New Jersey gardens. So this here is one of our porches and uh, we've got lots of periwinkle in here. Great ground cover, but a little invasive. I didn't plant it. It was here when we moved in. Um, I am not the biggest fan per se, but I do love how it looks in spring. And if you kind of want something low maintenance that attracts pollinators, I don't know if you could see the little bee over there. Periwinkle is a really great option. We've got some daffodils that are coming up in here. The hellebores are doing amazing. And this year I decided to go with spreading pansies in the urns and some containers. The color really got me while I was at the nursery this year. And I really love how they look for now until I pot them up with my summer blooming annuals. One of the changes that I made here this year is I hacked back the um, Nandina. I don't love it and I would actually like to take it out altogether and put something more evergreen along the house. Maybe some boxwoods, maybe a dwarf Alborada spruce in the corner or something just to get a little more evergreen interest. I just don't love the way that they look and I think they would do better elsewhere in the yard. So I cut them back. Um, they should get some growth back and not be so tall and leggy, um, but I think ultimately they're gonna get moved out. We've also got to paint the house, so just kind of like ignore that for now. <laughs> Um, but anyway, let's look at my planter. So I potted this up a few weeks ago, uh, actually probably about a month ago. So again, spreading pansies. These actually came in one pot, like one planter, and I split them all up to go around the sides of the planter. And then I potted up some ranunculus and a um, cordyline just to get a little height drama and color to the planters. And it's done really well. We had some freezing temps and they managed to thrive and keep on blooming. They probably didn't love it when it dipped down into the lower 20s, but plants stayed in great shape. And I am actually really loving this planter with how it looks with the rest of the gardens as you walk up to the porches. So also in this garden, we've got some Black Eyed Susans that are coming up. If you follow me, you know that they are glorious in the fall, late summer and fall. We've got some uh, Ajuga in here and uh, we've got some Baptisia coming up in the beds and uh, it's really starting to fill in. Now the other side of the garden here, we do need to mow, so kind of ignore that as well. Um, I've got a whole bunch of daffodils that I planted in the fall of 2022 and some tulips that I had to relocate from another area of my garden because some chipmunks must have dug up the entire tulip border that I had growing here all last year. I was very sad about that. So um, I had actually relocated some tulips to an area that uh, was really more of a holding area. So a few weeks ago, I moved them over here and some of them are about to bloom. Uh, I also decided to add some pansies this year. So I did a whole pansies border. In general, I prefer to plant my pansies in the fall because they overwinter here in my zone 6B garden and bounce back in spring. But last year, my super tunias were doing so well that I didn't want to take them out. And so I opted to hold off planting them. Kind of have some regrets about that now because I'm kind of wasting the money on them because they're not going to make it through the summer. But hey, it is what it is. So before we head down to the potager garden, I just want to note how we took out all of the pachysandra along here. I want to plant this whole garden up with like cottage garden flowers and tuck in some of my favorite cut flowers like zinnias and celosia and straw flowers because I grow so many of them and I did not love the look of the pachysandra and last summer, last year, the the potager looked so good. I really feel like this, we just need to have layers and layers and layers of flowers. So 
this is something that we have started. I already planted some hollyhocks that I started from seed using the winter sowing method along the back fence line. Last fall, I planted a bunch of tulips around the sedum. Autumn Joy, I've got some bearded irises in there and some alliums uh, growing as well. We moved this baby's breath spirea from like pretty close to that uh, dry riverbed and centered it over here and uh, dug and divided some uh, moonbeam coreopsis to go around it for the time being. I don't know if that's how I'm gonna keep it, but I had so much of it and I figured it would help with some of the erosion as uh, the season progressed. And just to give you guys a little view of the daffodil border right now, it is in full bloom. It is spectacular. And I, if you follow me on social media, you know that in the winter, our snowplow guy literally drove through the bed, like 15 feet. They took out my St. John's wort here, which I mean, I think I'm going to cut it back hard and or just dig it out when these are done blooming, but I just kind of didn't get around to doing that yet because I didn't want to disturb all of the daffodils that we had replaced. But um, thank goodness we were able to fix this border because I was devastated after I saw the damage. I mean, if you saw the truck tires that were in this bed, it was so sad. Um, and I was really worried about the plants. But fear not because everything looks good. I've actually been cutting some and bringing them inside for bouquets. And I fixed a lot of the damaged perennials along here as well. Um, I had it all planted up and they drove through them too. And so I'm kind of starting from scratch, but hey, you know, we'll, we'll try to make it look good again. So why don't we take a walk down to the potager garden because no, there's not a whole lot going on in there right now. I do have some things growing and uh, this is where I was doing most of my winter sowing. So uh, I did just top off these three raised beds with uh, compost and some raised garden bed soil because it really leveled down from last year. Um, I do have, last year I had filled this bed up so I didn't really do too much in this bed. Plus my Brussels sprouts and broccoli are doing amazing. I planted these in the fall, in the fall, didn't cover them and look at them now. Don't they look amazing? I mean, I have not had success with broccoli before. So for me, this is fabulous. I'm gonna be harvesting them this week to enjoy with dinner. Last year, I also planted a ton of garlic, so this is a first for me as well. I haven't done that before and am really excited about doing it. I mean, I, they grew, they look good, and uh, I can't wait to harvest it. I did plant up my um, larkspur that I winter sowed. I don't think they're gonna stay here though. I've noticed that they self-seed really well here, so I think I'm actually gonna put them in an area of my garden where I want them to do that instead of having them in here. I have so many flowers that I started from seed that I don't know that I want these in here and I think I'm gonna put them in the garden beds instead. But for, but for now, they're in this temporary spot. They didn't, it looked like they needed to be out of their uh, little containers. So I wanted to get them like planted. So I'm putting them in here for now and then I'm gonna move them. This bed, I've really gotta add some more uh, compost and soil too because look at it it's really really sunk down uh you know these are about 22 inches high i want to say so it takes a lot to fill these beds uh, so last year we filled the bottom half with a bunch of leaf mold and then i topped it off with compost and raised garden bed soil and it really really has sunk down so uh, but i did want to plant things before i had stuff uh, before I started doing that. So I'm probably gonna move them out and then move them back in after I level off the bed. I've got some more garlic over here. My sage did fabulous over the winter. That used to be for a basketball hoop. So we're gonna ignore that. <laughs> I'm actually gonna, we're actually gonna cut those bolts off and I'm gonna put like a statue or something there. Um, my Oh, so easy roses are doing really good here. They're from Proven Winners. This one, however, did not make it. I just planted a whole bunch of sweet peas 
that I started from seed using the winter sowing method. Excited about that, they're doing great. I just got them in the ground about a week ago. Uh, I've got some tulips coming up here. I don't remember the variety I planted. When they bloom, I'll know. Um, got some lavender over here that's coming back. And then over along here, I've got my at last roses. They were so pretty last year. They bloomed the first season and I love them. I just planted Eden climbing rose. I want it to go up the arbor because I've got Lana Sara and it doesn't look great for most of the season. I mean, early in spring, it looks amazing when it blooms and then it's just blah. So <laughs> I decided to plant some Eden roses on the side. And I've also got some clematis there as well. Now I'll take you guys down to the front pond garden. We fixed this whole gate, which was great. So we're gonna kind of walk through. And I planted this garden up with flowering bulbs in the fall and it's all coming in now. And I am, I could not be happier with how it looks. There was nothing here, nothing. Planted all of this. I do have some perennials in here as well that I planted last year. So I'm really excited about that. But I did all of these hyacinths and tulips and daffodils. And I have some al some alliums in here as well, sorry. Um, I'm, so I'm just really excited about it. And we are out here a lot. I've got some, solar string lights that really keep this area well lit and it's really coming together nicely. So as the plants come in, I'll show you a little more, but just to kind of walk you around so you can see what's here. I mean, can you believe nothing was here? I love it. This is an area that we like to call the cottage. Um, I use it for uh, bricks and blooms. I have a lot of things in storage. I pot plants and start my seeds inside there. And uh, it's just a great little outbuilding. And this bed was filled with liriope and some overgrown pachysandra. We were having some drainage issues around the cottage. And so we dug it all out, repaired all the drainage, and now it is ready for planting. I've already picked out my plants and I've started a bunch from seed. So this garden is going to seriously change. We, we started repairing the fence. There's a, a walkway on the other side that we're also in the process of repairing. So this is definitely going to be a work in progress, but I think you're gonna love it. And just to kind of walk you around to give you a little view of the changes that are happening here, you can see the pond bridge from here. Eventually, I'm gonna take out all of that liriope as well. Not really a fan of, <laughs> of it. It's great ground cover. If you want something that you don't have to like mulch and doesn't get weeds, it's really great for that purpose. But there was just so much of it here that it's just, it's time to go. So we've removed it all from here. This is the view. And we are in the process now of removing all of this tile. Yes, this is indoor tile that was put here to make a walkway outside, which clearly is not working. We actually took some up just to see how it was done, but we're gonna be replacing this with a nice stone path and it's gonna be really pretty when it's done. Now, many of you might remember this garden bed and how it was filled with liriope the whole way through when we first moved in and we took it out <laughs> and I have been planting it and growing stuff in here now for two years. Um, it does stay a bit more damp than other areas of my garden. So I've really been learning this garden bed, but um, this year we just, I did a New Jersey, I did the New Jersey Home and Garden Show and I had a ton of bulbs from that show. So I just put them all in the bed about a month ago. They are doing great. Hopefully they'll take in return. But right now the, bath, the daffodils that I had planted in the fall of 22 are doing amazing. They're doing really well. And I've really got a lot going on in here that seems to like the bed. So I've got some roses in here that the former homeowner planted. Uh, they've been here for years. I just left them and just kind of cleaned them up a little bit. These foxgloves I started from seed indoors under grow lights last year and they all returned. So I'm super excited about that. Daylilies doing great. Um, 
Minarda does really well here as well. I just dug and divided some of that. Black Eyed Susans are doing great in this bed. Um, what else do I have in here that does really well? Some hyd I have hy hydrangeas in here. They're loving the location and a few other goodies. Another drainage pipe. I gotta replace some of the soil in this container and pot it up. I'm just gonna wait though for my summer annuals before I do anything with it. I just don't wanna do anything with it right now. We've got some forsythia blooming at the end there. And really like, I, I mean, I will have to, I, I'm gonna pop a little picture of what this looked like a few weeks ago when everything was in bloom here. It was so pretty. Um, and uh, you know, this isn't my favorite garden, but it's, it's coming along. So this is a view of the front of my home with all of those gorgeous daffodils. We planted all of those daffodils along the stone wall when I first moved in. I also planted like, I want to say about 12 or 13 knockout roses there as well. We've got these beautiful hydrangeas that are just stunning when they bloom. Um, they did really well. And I'm really loving how this is coming along. I think I'm gonna have to ultimately do something about the ivy. There's so much of it up there and it really has taken over and I don't love it. So that's gonna be a change that I'll be making as well. Probably not this year, but it's gonna happen. One of the things that I'm really excited about is we are gonna be taking down this tree sculpture. I know some of you really love it and some of you don't. It's kind of like a love-hate thing on socials. I personally don't love it. And uh, I, I just, I really just don't like the location of it and we just wanna move it. So I think what I'm gonna be doing is removing all that Pachysandra, take the sculpture down, and I'm gonna put, probably not this year, maybe next year, a beautiful urn in its, pl in its place and fill it with flowers. Since I wasn't on YouTube much last year, I didn't get to fill you guys in, but we had a really huge evergreen tree here that was really dead and likely gonna fall on our house. So we took it down and I haven't done anything with this garden yet, but you can see it's filled in with all that periwinkle. And I mean, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do here. You see it when you drive in to my yard and uh, I gotta do something fabulous here. You guys have any suggestions? If you do, drop it in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you think. One of my favorite areas in my yard is the formal garden. It's really, really starting to fill out now with the trees starting to bloom. And there's lots of daffodils that are already flowering. It's really just a pretty garden. My goal is to fix some of these beds this year because they're we've had some drainage issues. And when the former homeowner was here, they had a bunch of statues that they took with them. And we just have not really done a whole lot here yet, but it is on my list. It is on my list. Uh, but everything's looking really good. Look at that. Trees are starting to fill in. We are having some issues with some boxwoods. So we're gonna actually wind up taking the two out by these two garden statues. But other than that, I'm really pleased with how the beds look. We've also got to get out here this year and kind of wash down the statues. They're starting to get a little green and uh, we didn't do it last year and I can just see all of, I, I, can, I can really see the difference in the statues from this year and two years ago when it was our first year here. So uh, got to get out here and do that too. I think I'm gonna probably do that over the next week. Um, but it'll look, it'll look pretty when it's done. Just going to be very gentle with it. Maybe just a little mild soap and water. One of the changes I'm making in the formal garden this year is the rope garden. So we call this the rope garden because of this tree sculpture that is a dead tree carved into a rope. Former homeowner had done this with several trees. Really cool, right? There was nothing planted in here. Last year, I came into some bearded irises and peonies, so I put them in here for now, um, but I'm actually gonna be moving them out because I have a whole garden of deer resistant flowers that I'm putting in here. We get deer out here like you would not believe. So I am creating a whole deer resistant flower garden with perennials and annuals that they should leave alone. And last but not least is the Zen Garden. 
Doesn't look all that fabulous right now because I haven't planted all of my pots up yet and everything still needs to leaf out, but it's coming along. We had to do some repairs on the fence because uh, a lot of it's a little weak, so we've been working on them piece by piece. But I do have some things flowering back here, um, which I'll kind of show you in a minute. New is this path, which actually I think we're gonna make a little bit wider. I don't love the funnel, but we're making it a little wider. Uh, my dogs do not love walking on this landscape stone, so we put in some stepping stones for them last year. Didn't love them, it was more of a temporary fix. We had those pavers here, um, but they were kind of starting to fall apart. So we bought some stone and we're kind of working on this area. So this is in progress. Yes, they're a little high, they gotta be dug in, work in progress. A little bit about the pond. I don't know if you guys remember, but we had stocked this with some koi fish. Last year, a blue heron got to a few of them at the end of the growing season when all of the trees defoliated. So we are going to be restocking this year and uh, probably netting the pond much earlier so that hopefully they'll be a little more protected once the foliage starts to come down. One, one of my favorite tree sculptures is the koi statue. Isn't that so cool? And it looks so pretty this year with all of those daffodils blooming around them. I love it. It's one of my favorite spots in the backyard garden and it's fabulous. You cannot beat the blooms on that spirea. Oh, it's gorgeous, smells amazing. And if you can grow one of these, it is absolutely worth having in your garden. Blooms like this in the spring and then in the fall, it gets a beautiful, brilliant color that really adds to your landscape. One of the things that I love about my backyard garden are the hellebores. They are my favorite. These actually started blooming in February. <laughs> and what is it now? It's April. They're still going. They still look amazing. And I've got a couple different varieties here. I don't know what they are because I did not plant them, but I've got them, some Virginia bluebells, which I think they look really pretty with, and some Brunera, also beautiful. All thrive in the shade and bloom about now. So I've got some daffodils blooming back here, some hellebores in the back over there. And really the landscape is just starting to fill out now. I love Pyaris japonica. It blooms about now and you can't beat the evergreen foliage. I sometimes cut it and use it in my winter planters, but it's really pretty in the landscape. Here we've got some honeysuckle filling out on the fence. Really pretty when it blooms. And that's it, you guys. Thanks for dropping by and hanging out in the gardens today with me. I'll see you in the next video. Enjoy a beautiful day.